we was out in that Adobe Flats pasture, and there was a big old, they called it Adobe, it was a big old flat place where an old meteorite had hit or something. It was real flat. And then it come up, there's sand hills back each way. That's a big old pasture, I think it was 22,000 acres. <laughs> And right in the middle of this, this fully split them big bastards. And, uh, what are you talking about this morning? The, this water hole was basically a little on one side, but mostly right in the middle. But everybody, we was gathering and bringing to this water hole down there at that yeah, Adobe sure. Flats, and uh, people coming in from every direction down in all that old berm there, probably hundred foot high, that went down into this thing, and then it was real flat in the bottom. There was people throwing cattle in from about every direction there, getting them. And there was a little old antelope down there in the bottom. And uh, he, oh, he was young antelope. He wasn't an old one, but he was a buck antelope. And uh, everybody kept getting closer and closer and closer and closer, getting down there towards that mill and that little old antelope. He'd go one way a while and see somebody and go the other way a while and see somebody. And, <coughs> Directly, he come by pretty close to me, and I was, I was riding old Wes, which is the sorriest horse I had. <laughs> but anyways, uh, That's good. I couldn't resist it. I made a run at that son of a gun while he outrun me like I was sitting still. <laughs> oh, shoot. Well, I pulled up, and that antelope went around a little further, and pretty soon old Jim Jones made a uh, run at him and kind of turned him a little bit, and then pretty soon old Darrell McPherson made a run at him. And here he come back, just right close to me, just wide open. Man, I just over and under old West just as hard as I could. And I I rushed out there just as far as I could reach. Air mail. And that loop was just closing up, and it got him and pulled his forelegs back in his flanks. And I had his forelegs back in his flanks and with one hand trying to gather the slack up, and old West got over on that side with his ass to him, and I was trying to hold him down, and he was, <coughs> I had his ass end up and his forehand down, and I fell off my horse right off the, on top of him. <laughs> and that danged horse kicked at me when I went off and split my ear, and there just blood everywhere. Of course, it didn't hurt, it just a little split. But I stayed on that antelope, and I'd get him down in the front, and he'd get up behind. And I'd get him down in the front, and he'd get up behind. <laughs> Directly old uh, Darrell McPherson got over there, sat on his ass end, and I got his front end down. And uh, we cut his throat, and uh, went and hung him up in the windmill tower, and gutted him, and then uh, went ahead and got her cattle and everything. And, then that night, when well, me and Daryl got in a pickup and went over there and got him and skinned him and cut him up and ate him, but that was the first antelope I'd ever caught, but there was about three or four different people had to make a run at it. It hadn't yeah. been just perfect. I just, <coughs> if it had been that much further, if it had been a foot further, Missed him. my rope would have well, been, been too be little, yeah. but yeah. I just barely yeah. caught it. Yeah, slack. <laughs> but uh, my shirt was almost sore off. He had, he had ripped the... My shirt was just tore off. It was just rags. Has that antelope made any count? I ain't never written in of it. I've eat, I've eat elk and buffalo and If you're hungry, it's edible. And, it's edible if you're hungry. Yeah, well, that's true. Anything. You know, it's really good. Depends on how hungry that's you are. That's exactly right. Isn't it? It's really good if you're hungry. Right. That's right. If you're not very hungry, it ain't very good. <laughs> it's just, that's the way it is. All right. But the white tail's the best out of white tail, mule deer, all that. The white tail's the best. I like that elk. Meat pretty good. Elk is the best meat I ever eat. Yeah, besides beef, I like me elk. Too. Meat. Yeah. Tell me. Oh, the wolves? Well, about how to get one horseback. Oh, well, Grandpa Lyke, uh, they had quite a few lobo wolves back in then, and them old wolves that he, he had. Uh, They'd have heck with them pulling yearlings down and calves down, killing them. And uh, an old female wolf, she'd have a a den someplace, and she'd always go three or four miles mm -hmm. to kill something. And then she'd fill up and bring it back and regurgitate for the puppies. That's right. But she never would attract any attention right around her den, you know. But, That's right. But anyways, Grandpa said you'd see one of these old wolves out out in the flat. He says, don't never break into a lope 
or he'll outrun you. But he said, uh, just get the longest trot you got. Just stay on that longest trot. Don't let your horse break into a low. And you just stay with him. He says, after a mile or two, he said, you jerk your water floaters up and end of your rope good and tight. And he said, just stay after him. He's in about four, four and a half miles. Well, he'll start slowing down, slowing down, slowing down. Finally, he'll just run plumb out of gas. Yeah. And you jerk your water flowers up and into your rope, then put a half hitch over him. And he said, you can crack him on the head and kill him, and get off and bash his head in. They kill him that way. But See, I've trapped, uh, I've trapped three of them boogers. That's where they're supposed to be any wolves there. They see the game well, department. Uh, uh, now this is a story. You need. I mean, they, if you want to tell it on tape, Henry, I want you to tell this story. The game department turned them loose on the public, but didn't tell anybody. And you'd hear about it in different parts of the country. You know, a wolf. Yeah. And, but they didn't tell the public about it anymore. They tell you about it, and if the wolf kills something, they'll pay you for it. You can't kill that wolf. But, I was on that L.E. and. Uh, I went over to the, I was riding on the south pasture, and I found this yearling out there, and one hind leg was eat plumb off, and part of his guts was pulled out there, and he was trying to get up. He was still alive. And Grandpa told me, he said, that's the way a wolf will do. He won't kill it. He'll, he wants to keep it alive as long as he can because it stays fresher. Yeah. He likes fresh meat better than rotten meat. Then he'll come back the next day and eat on it, and the next day eat on it till it spoils. But anyways, uh, I seen these two big old tracks back in there, and I told Sneed, Ray Sneed, the boss, I said, we got some big old dogs or wolves or something over there. I, said, I told him about that yearling and told him we'd found another calf or two that didn't know what killed him. And, but this is third or fourth carcass we'd found, and this is still alive. And I asked him if, I'd sure like to set some traps over there. And he said, well, you got any? And I said, not good big stout ones. He said, well, what do you need? I said, I'll need some number four new house traps. I said, they'll hold a wolf. He says, well, I said, you know, four will hold a. And he needs trap a good bit. They'll hold coyotes or like that. But I said, these are big. I said, I need some big traps. So I had about a hundred of these smaller traps. So already, cause I'd been trapping. And uh, he said, well, where do I get them? And I said, Amarillo Hardware. So he went over to Amarillo Hardware and brought me a couple of dozen of them big traps. And I went to setting trails, and I noticed them tracks and leave the trails. Oh, hell, them things are smart. So I went and got me Were a bunch of... Were they digging of, them out here? No, they'd go around them. So I went and got me some... They knew it was there, and I had them hid, so I... Went and got me some, uh, a little four four foot tarp, about four foot wide and about ten foot long, and and uh, went and cut me some sage and got a half a barrel, built me a fire and filled it full of water and put that sage in there, boiled that tarp, boiled me a bunch of gloves, boiled all my tools and boiled my traps. Take a scent. And uh, I had some rubber. Uh, over boots, I boiled them. I got that old waxy stuff off of that sagebrush all over it. And I took my pickup back over where I'd see a, them tracks in the trail coming out of that rough country. Mm -hmm. And I'd pull the pickup up on the downwind side. Always keep my pickup on the downwind side of the trail because the wind's always coming out of this way. And I'd throw my tarp out to that trail, take all my tools out there, and I'd dig me a hole out in that trail and put all my dirt back on that tarp and and bed my trap down in there and drive a stake and stake it put my little cover over the pad and cover it all up and switch it around good <coughs> and then get my little grass and dust it around a little bit and if I could see it I'd do it over because mm -hmm. if I could see it he he'd damn to it and I'd fix that thing to where you could not see it period it looked just as and I'd even get some grasses and make some little deals that looked like quail would run down the track, you know. And I'd fix it to where I didn't even know where it was. You know, I'd have to poke a stick to find it when mm -hmm. I come back to get it. Mm -hmm. Anyways, I set them traps and, and uh, I come back over there in three or four days. And I looked across there 
and I seen something there, and it, what in the hell? And I got up to it, and I had one of them boogers, and another had taken off, and I shot him. And he was over there chewing on the trap, biting on the trap. Yeah, trying to get it. Trying to get it off mm -hmm. of that. That was, and that was a dog, a little boy. He was a dog, the mm -hmm. one I well, killed. The one that was in the trap was a female. Trying to get her so, out. So I went up there and shot her. And this was in the summertime. The fur weren't no good, but I got him out of the trap and uh, I took him and skinned him. And I had to build some big, long stretchers because the cow stretchers Frames wouldn't hold yeah. Heck, they'd weigh yeah. like 90 or 100 pounds. That big one wouldn't. That other one weigh about 75 or 80. You know, a little 25, 30 pound coyote. Yeah, that I ain't gonna do. But anyways, uh, that that fall, that winter, well, our neighbor called and said, I got that other one. I said, well, how the heck did you do that? Well, he said, I went over to check water and cut ice, and I seen this irrigation pipe moving. And he said, there wasn't no wind. And he said, I kept watching, and I get a little closer, and that irrigation pipe had moved. <laughs> irrigation. So he said, <coughs> <coughs> he worked for uh, Nick's and Keyhole over there text line the guy I worked for. He had cattle over there. And got over there and this other run his head in that <laughs> irrigation pipe, eight inch irrigation pipe after a rabbit. And it had one of them old rubber flanges. It got hard. Yeah. And it sucks up behind his ear and he had his in the stanchion. Yeah. And he was out cutting yeah. that, uh, yeah. ice, so he just chopped his head off right there. And that was the end of that. We never lost no more cattle out of them things. And I wound up on my other traps. I set traps all over that ranch. I think I caught 78 coyotes and uh, them two wolves. And that one wolf would slip so bad, it was in the summer and the hair wasn't much good, that I didn't even sit it. But I sent that one with my cousin when he went, him and Everett Jackson and Sonny Smith went to Fort uh, Lyons, Kansas, uh, Fort, Fort Lewis or something. Up yeah. to Lewis, to the Missouri, to the fur auction. And the fur wasn't prime, it was in the summer, but it sold as one wolf, and I got $78 for it. I was sure proud of that $78. That's right, that's right. <laughs> and then I trapped, I trapped uh, one wolf in Union County, New Mexico. That one, the game and fish? Oh, on that game and fish, they, they was after me for, killing cougars. Oh, that's right, big cat, that's right. And the deal was, uh, people was losing cattle. Yeah, they would. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know all together, uh, me and Papa, we lost 13 head. And and Bud Layton, Bud there Layton supposed lost- There not be no cats in there. Lud, Bud Layton lost three or four colts, and Joe Mayfield lost eight. Uncle Everett lost something like 10 or 12. So they got the, these ranches are half in Colorado and half in New Mexico. So they got the Colorado Game Department to come down there and they run their dogs around and tore fences down and left gates open and mixed the cattle up and just raised hell <laughs> and said, there ain't no cougars in here. You guys are just trying to blame it on us. That's a figment of your imagination. So they got the New Mexico Game Department well, they pull the same stuff. They run all over that country and they ain't nothing here. So they asked me if I'd, I said, I'll, I'll get rid of them if you guys will pay me. They said, we'll pay you if you'll get rid of them. So I got me some traps. This is the ranchers now. Huh? This is the ranchers that told you that. that the ranchers hired me. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. And they paid me. Yeah. And I set traps and hung snares and put out poison. And, uh, I got I got I got after him there, and I killed a cat and nailed him to the barn mm -hmm. wall. And then I how was you in it? I was probably in my twenties. Anyways, I I knew that country, and and I knew I knew how to trap. I trapped for a living. I knew I could make more money trapping than I could work, and I could make. Forty-five hundred dollars a year working, and I could make eight or ten thousand a year of a trapping, you know, because I was good at it. But anyways, I 
the game department got into it and they was going to arrest me because there was a I have to have a license to kill a cat. They was going to take my furs away from me and take me to jail. And Papa more or less got a hold of his Winchester. I don't think he ever <laughs> threatened to kill him, but I, I just think he told him that no, he, they wasn't going to take me to jail. But that, them wasn't them wasn't cougar hides. Them was a figment of their imagination. <laughs> that's, that's so <laughs> him and him and Bud Layton and Joe Mayfield and his bro, his brother and everybody give me a bill of sale to their livestock that, yeah. that them cats had killed and said that they was going to find me and and they said uh, the lawyer that was working for them said that they, they was going to have to reimburse me for my losses and then I they could they could hold out the fine for my losses. My losses come to way, way over there. Yeah, and then big. all my, what do they call it? Uh, hardship and all that causing me, you know, that yeah. I could sue them yeah. for all this and all that. Yeah. So they said, and I I got nine bears. Some of the, this one old bear was killing baby calves and uh, he'd lay around the heifer pasture and he wouldn't eat nothing but a calf just a day or two old. Now finally, I trapped three bears and I finally got, well I shot, I shot two and trapped three, I guess it's five bears. But anyways, I got this old bear that was just about as wide as your hand and real poor and mangy and just had one tush and his muzzle was all gray and one eye was milky and just about as wide as your hand and he was starving to death. Mm -hmm. But he could still catch a baby calf and kill it and that's what he was living on. And when I got rid of him, they didn't lose no more baby kids, so he's the one that was there doing it. Mm. But we had to we had to just keep all that quiet because if the game department had found out about it, they'd have sent me to penitentiary. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of it we couldn't say nothing about. And then some of these some of these calves that was disappearing was uh, two legged critters. I can't say nothing about that, but they stopped killing they stopped <laughs> killing kids. They got scared enough to stop, and That's I just right. had to. Let them know that somebody's watching. Live or die. That's right. Your choice. And That's it right. stopped. And but that I don't need to get into that, and no, I don't want to talk no, about that. No, especially on videotape. <laughs> and, uh, anyway, that was basically the. They told the they told the game department said we're going to take you to Supreme Court. Said we ask everybody did what you told us to do. You tell us there ain't nothing happening, and this boy gets rid of her problem, and now you're going to send the him to penitentiary. And they yeah. said, no, you ain't. You ain't going to touch him. And we paid him to do this. We hired him to do this. And if you guys had been doing your job, you should have done it. Yeah. So they they decided just to, we don't want to hear no more about it. We don't want no publicity about it in other papers. We want it to just keep quiet and just let it go away. And if it ever happens again, let us know, and we will take care of it. But they couldn't do nothing to me. And I was scared I was going to go to penitentiary. I was scared to death. Because I had, I had two or three little kids, you know. Yeah, yeah. Trying to raise up. <laughs> Yippee-yi-yo, Henry. Anyway. We're going to let you get in there and rest. Yeah. But I tell you, Henry, if, if it's all right, we'll come back and, and maybe you just be thinking about the horse training end of it. You oh, know, how y'all took them, some of them old Willard tails and mustangs, and went on with them and made horses out of them and this and well, that and whatever.